What are atoms? How do they look like? Let's take a look into what we have learned about them and how we think of them. The history of the atom, part one. This is an icosahedron, a regular shape with 20 identical faces, or as nerds call it, a d20. This is not what atoms look like, but people in the past thought so for a while. Atomos, how Democritus invented the atom. Around the year 400 BCE, the Greek philosopher Democritus and or his teacher Leucippus invented the idea of the atom, also coining the name Atomos in the process. There were two major questions that influenced their concept. Of course, the obvious one, what is the nature of matter? But also, what is the nature of change and persistence? The previous thinking on matter was that it was seen as a continuum, meaning that any part has the same properties as the whole. In simple terms, if you take an object, if you take a thing and you cut it into pieces, then you can take one of the pieces and cut it again and again and again and again forever. But Democritus thought that when doing that, you would at one point reach a smallest part that you could no longer divide any further. Atomos literally means not cuttable. So in his mind, everything, every object is made up of vast numbers of tiny, tiny atoms that are too small to be seen by the human eye. He held that these atoms um, were of different form and of different order and of different position. And all these combinations would explain the difference of objects that we see. As he put it, outside of the atom, there is only void. As far as um, change and persistence go, there were some philosophers that held that change cannot really exist in the real world and is just an illusion. While a different school of philosophers claimed the exact same thing for persistence. The idea of the atoms tried to, to bridge these two ideas, uh, as it had both persistence in the form of the eternal unchanging atoms themselves, but also change in the form of our everyday objects, which are realized by rearranging the, the atoms that they consist of. Quite remarkably, really, many of, or at least some of Democritus' ideas are still what we believe to be true about atoms today. For example, there is only atoms and between them there is only void. Atoms are constantly in motion. Solids are made by heavier atoms and these are more densely packed, while gases are made by lighter atoms and these are, have more voids between them. One particularly interesting idea of his was that uh, you could strip layers of atoms off of objects and these could then be absorbed by humans where they would then cause sensory perceptions. Obviously, this is not true of how we see or hear, but this basically describes how we taste and smell things. As a side note, there were also contemporary Indian conceptions of atoms, very similar to the ancient Greek ideas. So if history had been different and science had not been invented in Europe, but in India, we wouldn't be talking about atoms today, but about Paramanus or Kalapas. But why did the idea of atoms disappear again after Democritus? It was strongly opposed by Aristotle, mainly because he didn't believe that a void could exist. Uh, maybe you know the term, nature abhors a vacuum. And as Aristotle's views were so influential to the later ages, the, the whole concept of atoms was basically disregarded for the next 2000 years. But also, uh, since it was such a strictly materialist theory, um, it did not really play well with the Christian ideas of, of soul and spirit. So it wasn't super popular in the Middle Ages as well. Plato's elementary particles. While not atoms in name, Plato's ideas about elements and platonic solids pretty much fall into the same category. Using 45, 45, 90 and 30, 60, 90 right triangles as his fundamental building blocks, it is possible to create all five platonic solids. 
In Plato's thinking, these solids are the mathematical foundations of the world and we humans perceive them to be the basic four elements uh, water, fire, air and earth. All earthly objects contain different portions of these elements according to their nature. The fifth element or the quintessence was said to be used to construct the heavens or the cosmos and was later fused with a similar concept of ether proposed by Aristotle. Okay, so most of this is just the typical mystical numerology that was popular in ancient times, but also it contains some interesting quantitative idea. So according to Plato, you can uh, rearrange the triangles that make up one element to get different elements. And that's how he explained how things can change from one thing to another. For example, you can break up one water element to get fire and air from that. And at least in a way, in principle, this is similar to our understanding of chemistry and how you can use atoms to create different substances. Did the ancient Greeks discover atoms? Now, whenever discussing topics like this, I think it is really important to do two things. A, acknowledge the achievements and uh, the intuitions of the people back then, but B, also not to overstate them. So, time to set the record straight. Did the ancient Greeks discover the atom or already know about the atom? No. See, they, they didn't know about atoms. Just some philosophers had some ideas that they believed in, while other philosophers argued the exact opposite. Uh, the ancient philosophy should not and cannot be compared to today's scientific knowledge. They very much operated on thoughts and hunches and arguments and not on experiments and measurements. For example, um, the justification that Plato gave for identifying the element of Earth with the cubic platonic form was this. Thus, it will please us to assign to the Earth the cubic form, for it is the most unmovable of the four elements and the most pliable. With all necessity, only the body that rests on the firmest basis can be as such. I mean, okay, it is some form of reasoning, but today it would pass at most as speculation or hand-waving. And a lot of it was also rather unclear and unprecise, so you would get the same effect that you get with horoscopes. As long as your description is general enough and open enough that it would fit most situations almost magically. So, what we should give the ancient Greeks full credit for is coming up with the idea of the atom, the, the concept. But nothing beyond that.